Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh and have a very good day. Today, I'm going to demonstrate on Structural Engineering Laboratory CES 511 Indeterminate Beam Level 1. Introduction The redundant in form of reaction exists in an indeterminate system. However, static equation itself unable to solve that particular redundant. The superposition method is one of the suitable approaches to determine this reaction. In order to determine DOI is equal to 3M plus R minus 3J minus C to determine either the structure is indeterminate or determinate. Then, we have to determine the fixed end moment of the fixed end beam and it is given by MFAB is equal to minus W where W is a load time with the A time with B squared over L squared and MFBA is equal to negative W time A squared time B over L squared. This is an example for point load at different length. The figures shows the apparatus for indeterminate beam experimental setup. It consists of support A and support B as a fixed support at both ends and then the point load and then the beam length should be 1 meter and we have the reaction A and reaction B underneath of support A and support B. In this experimental setup, you are allowed to determine the distance or position of the point load between A and B. The objective of this experiment is to validate the theoretical equation of fixed end moment through experimental work by using the superposition method for indeterminate beam. At the end of this experimental work, students should be able to determine the reaction of the indeterminate beam by using superposition method and describe the principle of superposition approach. Here are the explanation of the problem statement. The structural could be classified into statically determinate and indeterminate system. Static equation can be used to solve the determinate problem. Meanwhile, superposition method can be used to solve the indeterminate problem. The figure shows two types of indeterminate beam, which is the first one, showing the point load position at the mid-span and the second one showing the point load at the distance A and B. Today, we're going to demonstrate indeterminate beam experiment. Before that, I'm going to explain the apparatus. Here, are the apparatus for indeterminate beam. Before that, I would like to introduce the specification of the indeterminate beam. So here is the support system. Okay, we can adjust this support. Okay, we when we would like to apply the beam, we have to measure the span of the beam is one meter. So, after we fix it into 1 meter, then we can lock by using this lock. Okay? Okay, after you place the beam, okay, in the equipment, at the equipment, next we have to make sure that the beam is in straight condition. In order to make sure that the beam is in straight condition, we have to use this screw to lock the beam 
Okay, at the left and the right. Okay, after the beam is in straight condition, you may lock the support. Okay, the equipment is ready for the experiment. After we lock the support, okay, we have to loose this screw at both sides before we start to apply load to the specimen or to the beam. This experiment is to determine the reaction and moment of the structure. For this experiment, we're going to apply load at the center. Therefore, we have two support A and B. For example, if we have apply load here 10 newton, the value of the reaction at A and B is 5 newton and also 5 newton. But how are we going to determine the load based on this experiment? So I will explain how it's work. For the first one, okay, I'm going to apply five newton load, and this is acting as the point load. Okay, so next. We know that based on the calculation, if we apply 5 newton of load, we will have 2.5 newton at support A and 2.5 newton at support B. The reaction reading is based on this blue hanger. Okay, so you have to apply another load as the reaction. Okay, at both blue hanger at the same time, simultaneously. How we going to check the value is already correct? So we have to make sure that the reading of this dial gauge at both sides is back to zero. Then we apply another load okay, to the reaction hanger to make sure that both sides is in balanced condition because we apply load at the center until the dial gauge reading is equal to zero. So we apply the same 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. Then we can see that the dial gauge reading here at both sides is equal to zero. After both dial gauge shows the zero reading, therefore the value here at the blue hanger at both sides is your reaction value. So you have to count the load that you have here. For example, here is 2.5 newton at support A and another 2.5 newton at support B. Let's say we choose not to apply load at the center. For example, I'm going to apply load at 300 millimeter from support A. Therefore, the apply load or the point load here will be at this position 300 millimeter from support A. We know that based on theoretical, the value of the reaction at both sides will be different. The process in order to apply or to determine the reaction is same. We have to apply load at both hanger here for the reaction. But if we see that, okay, at one side is already become zero at the dark gauge, and another one is still not to not achieve zero or more than that we can counter the dial gauge reading to make sure it becomes zero and put the load at yellow hanger therefore the yellow hanger 
is functioning to counter back the load that we apply in blue hanger. Therefore, the total reaction is equal to the total load at the blue hanger minus with the total load at the yellow hanger become the reaction for this support. We have to repeat the same process again for another 4 reading with the total of the reading is 5 reading. Record and tabulate the data. From the experiment, the data has been tabulated as shown in the slide. So for this example, the load is applied at the position 250 mm from A and 750 mm from B. Therefore, the position of P is not at the center of the beam. The total length of the beam is 1 meter. The data that has been tabulated consists of the load on the beam, the reaction at support A and the reaction at support B. Based on the result, you have to analyze and interpret the data and each group is required to prepare the experimental report. In the analysis, you also have to analyze and calculate the needed answer based on the objective. At the conclusion, you have to discuss all of your laboratory work and it should be reflecting with respect to objective of the study. Here are some of the application for indeterminate beam. Indeterminate beam application is normally applied to continuous structure. So the first figure shows the continuous beam in the building. It's made by using reinforced concrete. Second one is the continuous bridge structure. And last but not least is continuous steel beam structure. Thank you.